<laughs> okay, so we have, I mean, you've, you've got this concept. This section is just about applying it to speed and velocity. Um, this is the slope of the tangent line here. This is the first derivative. The derivative of anything is the rate of change of that quantity. You can use either thing here. For some reason, they use S for position in that textbook. I don't know why. Um, you could use X. I don't know. When I took calculus in university, we always seemed to use X, even if it was vertical. But you can use whatever variable you want as long as you know what you're talking about. Uh, the other thing you have to remember, I guess, is the difference between speed and velocity. If you want to define it mathematically, speed is the absolute value of velocity. Like you don't care about the direction. Um, you have a speed limit on the roads as you drive. You don't have a velocity limit, right? If you had a velocity limit of 80 kilometers per hour, if you were going negative 200 kilometers per hour, it would be okay, wouldn't it? You have a speed limit. Because we don't care about the direction. We care that the number is less than 80, right? If you have a speed limit, if you're going, if your velocity is negative 200 kilometers an hour, your speed is 200 kilometers an hour. You don't care about the, the sign, right? Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. It's the rate of change of the rate of change. The units on this, if you're using meters and seconds, meters per second squared. Or in other words, I'm not sure if how comfortable you are with those units. I mean, you probably use them all the time, but just remember that it means meters per second per second, right? If, I mean, if the fact that the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, more or less it means if you throw something up in the air, the, the gravity is accelerating it or you know downwards like this at approximately 10 meters per second every second every second it loses so if, if you launch something upward at a hundred meters per second every second it's losing approximately 10 so after after a second it's going to be approximately 90 and then 80 and so on right uh, what blank didn't I fill in here uh, First, second derivative. First derivative. This page is just things that, I mean, hopefully are kind of obvious here. Whoops, did I do that too fast? So in that textbook, they use S, S of T as a function for position or distance, right? S prime represents velocity. Or you could call it V of T. S double prime. S double prime is acceleration. You could call it A of T. And if you really wanted, we're getting ahead of ourselves here, but S triple prime. <laughs> Jerk. The rate of change of acceleration is the jerk. Well, it exists, but it's, yeah, if you say I can't believe, I can't believe it has a name, right? But I guess it's. Changes in acceleration. I think a lot of the things you study in physics have a have a constant acceleration. If you're if the first derivative, in other words, if the velocity is greater than zero, then it's moving forwards or in the positive direction or something like that, right? Moving forwards, positive direction, however it is. However you define the positive direction, whether it's horizontal, you know, to the right, up, whatever it is. Uh, 
if it's less than zero, of course, it's moving backwards or in the negative direction, however you define that. If the first derivative is zero, if the first derivative is zero, then what's happening? It's not moving, right? Stationary? I don't know. It can be stationary for an instant, right? If you launch a projectile up into the air, it's moving up, and eventually it hits its maximum height right here. For that instant, it's not moving. At that instant, S prime of t equals zero. For this first part here, up to that point, S prime of t is greater than zero, because if I'm calling this the positive direction, and then for this part right here, S prime of t is less than zero. I think you know all these things already. Maybe just putting them into mathematical terms. If the first derivative of velocity is greater than zero, this is V prime of t. What is that equal to? V prime of t is acceleration, right? A of t. If the acceleration is greater than zero, what's happening for the object? It's accelerating. Yeah, we put that down here. In everyday terms, you could say it's speeding up, except that we run into problems when we talk about negative, negative acceleration or negative velocity. Or in other words, velocity is increasing. Um, accelerating, I, I, I hesitate to use the word decelerating here. Yeah, I mean, accelerating positively, accelerating negatively. If we're talking about positive velocities, right, then it's easy to use those words. But as soon as you have negative, then it's tough. So accelerating negatively. In other words, velocity is decreasing. If it's zero, then what's happening? Yeah, it's constant speed. It doesn't mean it's not moving. If if this is zero, well, it it depends because for what you're thinking of projectiles and stuff, you model them with. Uh, polynomials, you know, negative 4.9 t squared plus whatever, 10 t plus 7 or something like that. As you find the derivatives, you get negative 9.8 t plus 10. You get, if you do the second derivative, you get negative 9.8. If you, if you keep going with the derivatives, they're all zero after that. If you have other things like, uh, like harmonic motion where you have a, a, a mass on the end of a spring or something like that. Okay, If you have a mass on the end of a spring, it's, it's moving up and down. It isn't necessarily true that when the velocity is zero, the acceleration is zero. It, it, it's true for this, right? For this, for this mass that's moving up and down here, um, we'll try this at the risk of Losing your focus, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it's not necessary. That's uh, I. I gotta quit on that, I guess, eh? <laughs> quit on. Gotta quit on a high note. Um. Well, other than the fact that the mass was compressing and expanding as it went, but um, if you if you have this case, I don't want to get ahead of what we're thinking about here, but you were just making the connection that if the velocity is, um, if it's got a constant velocity, it's got a constant acceleration. If this is a case where at an instant where the velocity is zero, it isn't true that the acceleration is also zero, right? The velocity is zero when the mass is at the bottom. But it's still being accelerated upwards at that in that situation, right? Yes. Ten minutes. Thank you.
10 minutes and that's probably good for today.